This is... It's unbelievable. I never thought that I'd... sit at this desk again. <laughs> Us you could live without, but the desk? Right, yeah, it's not just the desk, it's... the blackboard. It's The blackboard's oh, okay. close to my heart. Fine. And the map of the world. You see, it's just that one thing. For some people, it's the Grand Canyon. For some people, it's the, the Champs-Élysées at night, Big Sur at sunset, Times Square on New Year's Eve. It's that one place that makes you feel alive, helps you understand what it's like to fit into the, the grand scheme of things. Does anybody know what I'm talking about from personal experience? I feel like totally cosmic. Driving my granddad's Fermi. Learning mm. <laughs> whoever is a religious experience. Yes. Well, Buddha didn't get enlightenment under a tree. No, no, no. You see, what Bobby feels from driving an Italian sports car, I feel from standing in front of a classroom full of young, eager minds. Well, Mr. D, it goes both ways. Hey, it works for us. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Well, having said all that, um, I must tell you honestly that I am completely unprepared so <laughs> where are we in the classroom here well you see we've been very busy consulting the text mm -hmm. consulting the text okay well that's good so um how far did we get in the book well uh, this, this funny little thing so you've got to be conscious in order to read yeah samuel should rent himself out to insomniacs i see so we're all claiming mass amnesia here. Pretty... all a blur sounds like pizza to me yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, listen to me when all else fails i assign a project. Ooh, assignments already. Well, you wanted a history teacher. You got one. Yeah, that's right. Today, we delve into history by word of mouth. Personal retellings of world events. I want you to break it up into five different chunks. Tell what happened in your own words. Bobby Warner, you go first. Ooh. The Cold War era. Tell what happened in your own inimitable style. Well, <laughs> should be good. Uh, Cars it became very important. <laughs> you see, it goes back to when my grandfather was in school and he was walking uphill in snow. What? He's already up in, in the classroom? He's back. And he's on top of his form. What? <laughs> You never really recovered from our torrid little three-way fling. Mary, don't make it out to be some kind of menage a trois. It was nothing but a big, stupid... Thrill, which haunts you to this day. Speak for yourself. I'm speaking for my daughter. And why should she suffer for the sins of your past? The only thing that's suffering around here is the work. Why? Every time you see your boss, you see that girl you seduced and betrayed? We betrayed. I was a kid. What's your excuse? Give me a break, Tad. No. I don't want to get into this with you. You just proved my point. This is a TV studio, not some kind of group therapy session. I'm here to make TV. Well, make whatever you want, but not from the shards of my daughter's career. Your daughter's got nothing to worry about. Because you're not in her league. Liza's good. One of the best. When I take her job, she'll get a better one. Tad, why is it that you want everything that belongs to my daughter? It doesn't belong to your daughter. Nobody's name is monogrammed on the, on the station manager's job, okay? The job goes to the best man. Liza has the job. Not for long. Why do you want more always, Tad? It's never enough for you, is it? When is this going to end? When this office is mine. And my daughter, too? I don't want your daughter. Oh, well, I think you do. Well, thinking was never your best event. Well, that's certainly sweet of you. To say that. You were pretty good in the physical department oh, yourself, Mary, Donnie. Why do you always have to turn everything into some kind of sexual innuendo? Unfulfilled desire? Is that what this is about, Dad? No. Unfulfilled ambition. That in a really lousy working environment. You know, suppressing an attraction can be volatile. I'm not suppressing anything. I want your daughter's job. I'm going after it. You really care about her? Then persuade her to cut her losses and move on. Don, hang in there. I'm coming back for you soon. Good, oh, Donna. It's too hot. People get a heat stroke. 
Noah, take your time and rest. You know what you're doing. Oh, God, I'm talking to Noah. This is good. Why not? Who else should I talk to? Just don't talk. With you two, some kind of block. You still don't understand that Taylor's psychotic? What makes you think that Taylor's down in Jamaica? I saw her in the grill. You spoke? No. What, you saw her at, at a distance? No, what? No. In a crowd on a, on a beach? Wait, wait. This is me, guys. Haley, Vaughn, a regular person, a functioning human being. I run a company. I, unlike some people we know, have never faked a pregnancy in my life. Why is my integrity being questioned? Somebody's got to get to Jamaica and warn Noah and Julia that Taylor is on their trail. So Taylor is in Jamaica, along with how many other Americans? Come on, tourists? Derek, come on! Yeah, her career just came to an end, so she went down to liquor wounds in a nice sunny port of call. No, no, she's baby, flashing eh? pictures of Noah and Julia. She's pressing the, the locals for information. Maniacs don't do R&R. &R. She's... She's, she's dangerous, Derek. She's dangerous. What could Taylor do to Noah and Julia? She has a gun. You do the math. No, she had a gun. PVPD reclaimed it. Well, here's the really unique thing about Taylor and weapons. She's like Houdini. You took her gun, she made another one reappear. Three guesses as to why Louis Greco's weapon was never recovered. Taylor, you keep your three guesses, Haley. Why don't you just tell me, huh? Taylor has Louis Greco's gun. And I don't know what it's going to take for you to do something about it. What is it? What's going to have to happen? Does Taylor have to kill somebody? And then will you listen to me? Wait, are, are you saying that you actually saw her waving a pistol around in the grill? I'm saying that Taylor packed a gun. And she is over the edge. Her mother knows. You can talk to Vivian. And she's down in Jamaica because Noah Kiefer is. Yes, Noah Kiefer, the object of her obsession. Look, she was removed from the police force because she was mentally incapable of handling uh, the job. Taylor was let go for falsifying a medical condition. Oh, she's got a medical condition all right, Derek. She's completely insane. I mean, she faked a pregnancy. She faked the whole condition. She, she faked a miscarriage. It's not hard to go from that to perjury. The, the more she gets away with, the worse she gets. Taylor was close to the edge the day I came to fire her. Yeah, well, nobody takes a pink slip very well. Yeah, well, it really gets bad when you start packing weapons. Now somebody's gonna die, Jackson. That's kind of hard to see her as a threat to Noah. I mean, he's a large, powerful man. Funny thing about a gun, it sort of equalizes that situation. And he did get away from her once, didn't he? Oh, that's right, the fugitive part two a go-go. Let's talk about that. How do you suppose a handcuffed man gets away from not one, not two, but three armed guards? At the same time, a stolen car just happens to crash into the prison van. What do you think? Taylor could have set that up. Taylor's the one that belongs in a cell, Derek, a padded cell. Yeah, well, Taylor is not the convicted felon. Noah is. Now, he says he's innocent. Fine with me. Haley, then let him just come back and start his appeal. What is it going to take to make you listen? Taylor is a bomb, and she's about to go off. Now, you've got to do something about this. You've Ms. got Vaughan, to... You have an emergency phone call in the office, uh, the Greenwood factory? Oh, yes, thank you. I've got to take that call. I'm begging you. Please listen to what I've said. What do you think? 
think Haley was probably a hell of a private investigator. That's About her theory. Well, she certainly believes it, doesn't she? <laughs> well, don't look now, but it looks like you and I are going to get a chance to try it out. Excuse me, uh, what time does Mateo Santos come in? Oh, he's off for a couple days. He isn't ill, is he? No, he's out of town. A family emergency. This is the famous Undertaker's Breeze. <sighs> Feels like a breath from the grave. It's icy cold in here and it's blazing hot outside. Oh. Corinne said the Undertaker's Breeze only blows at night. Ikaobora. Ikao Kanran. Ikao Koran. Something bad? There's a darkness. A danger. It's getting closer to Julia. Noah will take care of her. Careful, Julia. Be careful. Ikao Bora. Ikao Conrad. Ikaiurasa. A warning? Maybe too late. Give it up. Give it up. 